What's up, everybody? Look, uh, we appreciate our audience tremendously. The show has grown huge over the last seven years. And so what we wanted to do right now, because it is the beginning of the year, so when a lot of people want to work out, want to get in shape, we actually wanted to give people a free 30-day MAPS workout program. This is not one of the giveaways we do on every YouTube. I'm going to do that too. This is going to be free for everybody, okay? So this whole episode that we're doing that you're going to listen to, we talk about this 30-day workout includes exercises and mobility sessions. You're doing something every single day. It's all mapped out, planned out for you and hyperlink to videos where we're demonstrating form and coaching you through them. All right, this is day one. I'm super excited to bring this workout series for you guys. We've been asked a ton of times, if you guys were to plan out, Mind Pump were to plan out the perfect 30 days to get somebody started towards their health and fitness journey, what would that look like? This series is, we're gonna play, take care of every single day for the next 30 days for you. But pay attention because a lot of people, this is what ten, they tend to do as soon as January rolls around. They got new year, new you, new goals, and they go gung ho. But what we're gonna show you guys is how to strategically progress this every single day. It's a free MAPS program and it's for everyone. You can find it at maps30day.com. So that's for everyone. And again, that's what we're talking about. Now here's the other giveaway. This is the YouTube giveaway that we do on every episode. It's gonna be MAPS Anabolic. So if you wanna enter to win that, Leave a comment below for the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. You got to do all those things. If we like your comments, we will notify you and you'll get free access to Maps Anabolic. One more thing before we get started. We are running a sale on three workout bundles right now. We have a beginner workout bundle, an intermediate workout bundle, and an advanced workout bundle. All of them include nine months of exercise programming, multiple workout programs, the whole deal, workout videos, blueprints, everything explained and done for you. So it's in each one of those bundles. If you're interested, you just want to sign up, head over to mapsjanuary.com. And then one more thing, if you just want to try one MAPS program, do MAPS Anabolic. It's the flagship program. You can get that right now for half off. If you want to do that, go to mapsred.com and then use the code January50 for that discount. All right, here comes the show. I wanted to do an episode. I thought that would be cool. Um, and what, what sparked this was, and we did this. You guys will remember what I'm talking about in a minute. We did this, I, I believe, four years ago. Um, we wrote this you know, free 30-day workout uh, that we did, and then we shot it on YouTube. And, and uh, we Oh, it's like a free MAPS program. Yeah, and, it, and uh, it was very well thought out. We produced it. We spent some good money and time putting it together. And it was like over four years ago. And why I wanted to talk about it is because I've got a lot of family and friends that I wouldn't consider um, like hardcore fitness people. I would consider them January fitness people, mm -hmm. you know, but the new year comes around, they put on some weight and they want to get started. Well, all these close family and friends of mine, they have all of our like map starter, maps anabolic, a lot of our beginner programs at one point, either given them access or they've purchased it. And you know what they are? They all follow, and I just found this out just the other day, like mm. talking to a few of them, um, they all reference this 30 day as yeah. they absolutely, mm. and they've tried the other ones and they're like, it's just, they feel like it's perfect. They're like, I feel like you guys hit it out the park with uh, the right amount of exercises and work. And it's so specific because we give something like every single day for them to do. Um, and then we scale the volume up. It's the perfect way to get, I think, to get started, especially if you're looking to get started um, in the month of January on your on your fitness goals. You know, it's funny. We were all talking about how grateful we were the other day. You know, it was the new year and we've been doing this now for about seven years. Um, so it's been a while and we wanted to give people something free. Now we give lots of free information, right? We give lots of free advice and uh, you know, how to do this and how to help you with that. Um, but we, we talked about giving some people a free 30 day starter of getting going. So I love that you're going in this direction. We created this four years ago before we got, we were a fraction of the size we are now, right. which is probably why yeah. it didn't explode. Right. We were kind of tiny yeah. back then. We just forgot about it. Yeah. That's There's it. so much <laughs> valuable information here that we haven't yeah. really brought up in a long time. So I'm glad, I'm glad we're revisiting it. Yeah. And the truth is, although it's more complex than this and there's coaching involved and hopefully our podcast uh, provides that uh, for people, but when people first get started, I mean, I know you guys know this when, when you first get a client, it's, 
you really do increase their odds of success initially when you can help them day by day. Like people yeah. like to know what can I do every single day? Now, of course, you're not going to lift weights hard every day. That That's counterproductive. It's not going to work. It's not good for your body. Uh, but there are things you could do every single day that kind of keep the ball consistent, keep things rolling. And then if it's done properly, the way you feel really is a, a, a motivating factor to help you continue on. Of course, it's more complex when you get further down the year. But at least that initial startup can be done the right way. So that's the that's the feedback that I was getting. Right? Okay, so the perfect. feedback that I'm I'm getting from my family and stuff that are that are following it is they love that it's like they have a small goal every day. Mm -hmm. And it's 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 very obtainable. It's not very time consuming, but they have something they can work on their health and fitness every single day. And every week we kind of scale it up. So they can start to slowly build the volume mm -hmm. up and get some momentum. That and then the combination of what we did with mobility, because one of the other things we get is we talk a lot on the show about the importance of mobility, mobility, and we've got programs and stuff around it. But we've we've sold a lot of people on the idea of the that they need to be doing this. But then so many people kind of don't know where to start. And sometimes Prime and Prime Pro, there's we, we, we've provided so many movements in there um, that some people feel kind of lost. Like, I, could you just tell me what I should do? And then we're always like, well, that's kind of generic just to say, go do this. But we map that out in this program based off of the exercises yes. that we knew they would be doing to make it as, as customized and individualized as yeah. we could. And we picked like the biggest bang for your buck type of mobility moves. And that's the feedback I get. I get the the day-to-day -day stuff, so I have a goal, and then the addition of that, the, inter the introducing them to mobility and to be able to actually feel what a difference it makes right away. Yeah, mobility requires good programming, just like a workout. I think people think mobility is just general, and there's value to just doing mobility. But to really get value out of it, it, it should be programmed properly, just like an extra, like a workout program. And the, the, the factors that you consider are your individual body and the other factors you consider your workouts. What are you doing the day before? What are you doing the day after? Because that can make a huge difference in terms of, you know, what you need to focus on. You know, we have a, a, a very large audience. The, the show gets millions of downloads a month and a small fraction of people take the leap and sign up for and buy one of our workout programs. There's a lot of people that listen and don't take that step. And I get it. I totally understand that. Uh, it's it's a leap of trust when you do something like that, especially with online workout programs and stuff like that. So this is going to be free. So we're literally in this episode, we're going to break down, you know, the, the the features of it, of this program that we're giving you. We're going to talk about the value, what it's going to do for you, what to expect over the next 30 days, how to progress through it, why we created it the way we did. And you're going to actually have access to this all written out for you. Not only is it all written out, but the exercises that you'll get access to in a blueprint are going to be hyperlinked to videos on YouTube where we're demonstrating right. how to do these exercises. So for all intents and purposes, this is a, a straight up full on 30 day maps workout program. And it's a really great way to get started. It's a really great way I to get structured and organized. Yeah, I think um, a good way to explain this, this is like our most handheld type program where we really tried to kind of eliminate a lot of confusion, a lot of, um, we didn't want to inundate people with too much information, which is something we learned as trainers. We got to start real simple and, and, and just keep it to the real effective uh, point of focus. And so, you know, this program is, is sort of that introduction where, you know, you can really get a good experience and then build off of that to where you won't need so much handholding and then be able to kind of work your way through on your own. Totally. You, you know, the other thing that we did, and I, I forgot that we did this because um, I don't think we've done this any other time, is we were experimenting with uh, the coaching aspect of the videos. Yes. So, and we had a little bit of fun with it. I actually really, I, you know, and maybe we'll go back another time and do this because I've had nothing but positive feedback and we only, we, I think maybe we did it because it just, it took all three of us and it was a little bit more timing. We're like, okay, this isn't realistic to do this all the time, but we yeah. had Justin demo the exercises. So he's being videoed and then Sal and I are commentating. So, and kind of like talking about we're coaching. Yeah, the whole we're, thing. we're coaching, yeah. we're coaching 
uh, and pointing out the movement and the cues while you're actually performing it. So it's actually really good coaching uh, built into it. And you get a little flavor of our personalities too, if you don't know. Yeah. So, here, like. so here's some of the features of this 30 day workout program. Now, remember, you have something to do every single day with this. So every single day, you're either going to be using resistance training or working on mobility. And the workouts and the in, in the mobility sessions are going to range anywhere between 20 to 60 minutes as you progress uh, through this program. So every single day, you'll have something written out for you. You'll have demos on how to do them and coaching cues uh, throughout the entire program. So it's basically as close as you get, you can get to having us train you uh, in person without us actually being there in person. So one of the features of this program, especially in the beginning of the program, is a focus on compound lifts. So compound lifts are exercises. Now, the, 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 the specific definition of compound lifts would be lifts that involve more than one joint. But to, to make it more simple, really these are exercises that use more muscles require more motor control and more stability than other exercises. And what this does is it results in more bang for your buck. So to give you a good example, a squat is doing so much more for your legs than let's say a leg extension or a donkey kickback or an isolation movement. It's just one exercise does so much. Now, why do we do this? We're saving time and we're maximizing results. Uh, I, most people are not looking to work out more for less, right? They want less for more. The compound lifts and exercises do that. And there's so much carryover. As you get stronger in these particular core lifts, you're going to you're going to see carryover into other movements and other exercises down the road. We also uh, follow the the principle that we always talk about about doing the least amount possible to elicit the most amount of change, right? right. So we start the very first week and there's only three of those movements mm -hmm. uh, per workout. Uh, and then we actually split the body up, right? So you have upper, lower, upper, lower. So yep. throughout the week. so you the, And the, mobility in between. That's right. And then mobility. And then the mobility is specifically uh, addressing the movements that you did in the, the previous day mm -hmm. so that they, they complement each other. And I think that's what people really enjoyed was it, it was something as simple as just a, a couple of exercises, three exercises to get started with. You, the, we, we're picking ones, the biggest bang for your buck. So we know them doing even just those three movements is going to start to show change in their body. Yep. Most people, if they're just getting started, we also know they're probably going to be sore and feeling that. It's the first time they're doing a lot of these movements or, or first time in a long time they're doing these movements. And so then the mobility days on the following day really address that. Yeah, so essentially, yeah. go ahead, Justin. Oh, also too, yeah, just the compound list. I know that they're a bit intimidating for people if they don't have any previous experience to, uh, you know, trying to complete these types of exercises. So we spent a lot of time breaking down, you know, a lot of the nuances of these lifts. So that way, you know, you maximize your effort, your form, your technique, and everything's on point. Yeah, totally. So think of it this way too, like one day you're sending a signal to your muscles and your body to get stronger to adapt. There's a little bit of damage that's done. That's what sends the signal, right? Because that's why you get a little sore or, or it's kind of hard. The day after is mobility. Mobility is recuperative. Mo mobility uh, helps facilitate recovery and helps you move better so that the, not, the next day when you exercise, you're actually doing movements better than you did before. So you'll start to see this kind of linear progression because of this alternating pattern of resistance training and mobility. So I can say very confidently this program focuses as much on mobility as it does on the exercises. And that just results in a program that feels really good as well as being extremely uh, effective. Another thing about this program is over the course of this 30 day period, you scale, you scale up. So what you'll notice is each week you're adding an exercise or two to your workouts. So week one, maybe three exercises on a particular workout, week two, maybe four, and so on. And what this does is it keeps the ball rolling. And as your fitness level improves and, and gets better, you can do more and get even faster results. And that's actually what you start to notice is you'll start to notice that the results will start to kind of accelerate. Well, it's, it's addressing what I think we all agree is maybe one of the number one, if not the number one mistakes that people make with their New Year's resolution when they get back into the gym and that is yeah. throwing everything that they can, they, they can tolerate. Like you like yeah. to say, like what you can tolerate 
and what is best for your body are two different things. And so we're really encouraging people to do what's probably best for them volume wise. And then we will scale that up over time mm. and eventually get to maybe where you're, you can tolerate. But starting off right away in this in the the amount of intensity and volume as the most you can tolerate is a, is a losing strategy. Yeah, to, to, to illustrate Whoa. that further, think of medicine, right? You, you have a headache, you need to take some ibuprofen. There's an amount in ibuprofen that's going to help take away your headache. And then there's an amount in ibuprofen that you could take that you won't die, <laughs> but you can, you'll survive, right? Those are, that's tolerate versus effective dose. Exercise is the same way. And we tend to push ourselves, especially when we first get started and do the maximum amount that we can handle, not the optimum amount. And so what we're trying to do with this is we're, we're, we're giving you the optimum amount. And over the course of 30 days, as your body's uh, ability to do more and to handle more and recover faster and also require more, right? So what works for you in week one isn't going to necessarily work for you anymore week four because you've already gotten stronger and you're more fit. So the program scales over the course of that 30 days. It also gives you something to look forward to. What I also like about this program is that, um, you know, we prescribe uh, the mobility because like we're establishing these rituals. So we're setting you up for long-term success, not just like getting you to this weight loss goal or this, you know, sort of 30-day goal and then you stop. No, we're trying to set you up so you feel good. Your joints, uh, you know, are, are stabilized. They're, they're you know, uh, strong and supportive. Uh, and, you know, you're able to then move forward as you gain the, the strength that you're going to gain in conjunction with the weight training. Totally. So there's something, so there's a phenomena that you can apply to many things called a positive feedback loop. Um, and to give an example of that, it's like, uh, if you've ever had a microphone where you speak into it and then your voice comes out of a speaker and then you get the microphone close to the speaker and then you hear this really loud sound, what's happening is the microphone is picking up sound. It's getting amplified by the speaker that gets into the microphone. And what happens is this what's called a positive feedback loop, right? It accelerates and gets louder and louder and louder until you blow the speakers out. Well, when you program mobility and exercises together, so not just mobility by itself, exercise by itself, but rather we put them all together, knowing what you did before, knowing what you're doing after, knowing what you're doing the previous week and the, and the, and the week that follows, is you actually get this positive feedback loop with the mobility program with the workouts. You actually start to get better and more efficient and effective results as you continue. So that's one of the features of programs that are written the way that we created this one. Now there's one other thing that's included in this because it's 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 resistance training focused and mobility focused. And a lot of people say, well, what about activity? What about daily activity? What about cardio? We've thought about that as well. Now in our experience, the most effective way to increase activity is not to schedule 30 minutes or 45 minutes on a treadmill or a bike. Now that that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But taking an additional 30 minutes or 45 minutes out of your day to walk on a treadmill, you're far less likely to be consistent long term versus just tracking your steps throughout the day because yeah. you can do that throughout the day and you can literally do things like park further or walk a little further with your dog or take the stairs instead of the elevator. All of this actually adds up and in the program, we give you step goals on a week by week basis. So not only do you have your workouts and your mobility workouts, but you also have step goals that also scale as you progress through the program. You know, even though well, this was, go ahead, Justin. Oh, uh, well, this was a big epiphany I had as a personal trainer because there's so many competing factors. Uh, and, you know, to be able to schedule a lot more time specifically for a treadmill or for a bike, you know, that's going to take away all these other items and things going on in your day that you have to consider. And so for me to kind of eliminate that and just focus on, uh, more of the activity of you being productive and then incorporate that into success of body fat loss or whatever is going to help kind of aid in your progress uh, by just tracking the amount of activity overall. Uh, it had way more uh, uh, adherence. Oh, yeah. totally. That's a, it's a similar point that I was going to make is, you know, I, th although this is a, you know, beginning of the year, uh, getting someone started type of a program, uh, over my years of training clients, I actually found this as a strategy altogether for no matter what level of experience you are. Totally. To, I mean, for example, like the, the last official, like, you know, true 
client that I trained was probably like Melissa for a show, right? And this is one of the ways. So the bikini competitor, high, uh, like highly knowledgeable, experienced. Yeah, advanced. Yeah, advanced lifter. But yet this is exactly how I prescribed her fat loss journey heading into her bikini competition would be through steps. I just find it a much better strategy uh, for people to follow instead of this like, oh, you need to be on a treadmill for a one hour time versus I just need you to get your steps to this point when and how you get there. I really don't care. You could break it up 10 times in the day or hit it in three little bouts. It's it's easier to scale and it's easier to sustain after you reach your goals. Right. So versus this, like I have to be somewhere for one hour on a treadmill in addition to my weight training. It's like, hey, I was doing 10,000 steps a day and now I'm I'm at my goal or whatever. So I know like as long as I keep my walking up and act be active and you know, like Sal said, go park further away, take the stairs instead of the elevator, I can maintain that type of movement and not feel like I'm having to schedule an hour of cardio out of my no, day. No, that's it's so effective. I mean, and you're talking about a bikini competitor who, you know, this is an advanced person who's competing. I mean, the average person, one of the biggest struggles with consistency is just how do I schedule all this stuff? How do I how do I keep this up? Well, when you're talking about steps, it's it's really just about your daily life. I mean, when I had clients do this, and and step counters are inexpensive and use your iPhone. Yeah, your, even your phone will have an app that can do this, so anybody can do this. It's super easy. Like I would have clients that would tell me, "Oh, you know how I I used to have to do thirty minutes of cardio, you know, once or twice a day to hit ten thousand steps." And I'm using a just a, a arbitrary number, but they would say I'd have to do that to hit my step goal. Now I literally, I mean, we're we're saying things like park further and use the stairs. Sounds silly, but that's literally what they would do. They would say, "Oh, I would I would just take the stairs a few." I had one client who said, "You know what I do to hit my step count, Sal?" She goes, "Instead of using the bathroom on my floor at work." I use the bathroom that's two two floors up, and I just take the stairs. And at the end of the day, I end up hitting my step goals. I don't have to do any cardio. And it's so easy to be consistent that way because you don't got to go change, go to the gym, schedule this, and go do that. Now, if you want to do that, that's fine. If you love that, there's nothing wrong with that. But we wanted to make – one of the problems with giving people a 30-day workout is this. There's a million and one 30-day crash course, lose weight, you know, contest-type programs that you see online – we wanted to maintain our integrity and give people a 30-day start that was sustainable, that was had a long-term effect as well. Not just 30 days, get in the best shape of your life, baloney, and then get out of it because we hate that as trainers. That just always fails. Well, that was the main goal, yeah. right? We know that um, most people that get started in January aren't here three months later. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of the, the, the problem we were trying to solve. It's like, okay – we recognize there's a massive wave of people that are coming into the, the fitness sphere right now. And we know that many of them, more than half of them, will be exiting in three or four months. Um, if we really care about and are passionate about what we do, uh, how do we help a majority of those? How do, we, how do we solve this problem? And I think one of the biggest problems is starting it, it with a routine that's not sustainable. I mean, and that's the biggest, mm -hmm. is, is not focusing enough on laying a solid foundation. And I really think that's what this is, is it's a very solid foundation for anybody that's been away from the gym for an extended period of time or somebody who is just getting started yeah. in the gym. Now, before we get into the kinds of results that you can expect in 30 days, and again, remember, we were trainers for two decades before we ever started this podcast. So we're going to be very honest. What you're not going to hear from us is you can lose 30 pounds. No, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you baloney like that. I'm not going to tell you what you can accomplish if you do things that are not sustainable or if you harm your body. We're going to be very honest. But before we get to the types of things you can expect within this 30 day period, I'm going to give you an example of what the first week looks like. And then remember, this scales every single week. So the first week is literally the least uh, exercises and work. Every single week, you'll add an exercise or two or a mobility movement or two as you progress through the program. So just to give you an example, right? Monday, for example, day one, you're doing a bench press, a pull-up, and an overhead press. And remember, all of this is on a calendar that you're going to be able to get. Uh, and I believe the website, I think we have it up here now, maps30day.com. So it's uh, maps30day.com. So you can go there and get this calendar. When you click on bench press, pull-up, or overhead press, there's a video demo with us live coaching it and telling you all the cues, right? So that's day one. Day two, mobility. 90-90 with the back leg up. The next one is the shoulder dislocates. Then you get to lizards with rotation. 
Wednesday, this is your lower body, barbell squat, barbell hip thrust, walking lunges. Then next day, mobility again, pigeon, thread the needle, and the high five movement. So if you don't know what these are, again, remember these all have videos that you can click on literally the word high five and you'll see what that is. Then Friday, upper body again, flat bench fly, straight arm pull down, laterals. Then Saturday, supine scorpion, prone cobra, and then handcuffs with the rotation. And then Sunday is the next lower body day. It's Bulgarian split stance squats, Romanian deadlifts, and calf raises. That's the first week. Each week we add more, you scale up, and it gets a little bit more challenging, allowing your body to progress uh, the entire time. So I just want to give that example so people kind of get an idea of what that first week looks like. The, the first week has also got 8,000 steps a day is, is the yeah, first target, right? right? Which right. Th th This is the one area where I would kind of... Depending on the the family member that I was talking to, we could we could change or modify, right? And what I mean by that is, so I might have like my you know seventy something year old uh, aunt who uh, isn't moving at all, and asking her to do eight thousand steps yeah, is it's a, too big of a leap. Too big of a leap. And what you'll see is basically we're scaling up two thousand steps every week on somebody. I would just start her at a lower position. So if I know she's doing hardly anything and not moving, she may only start at like 4,000 steps to get her going. And then I'll move it to six and then eight. And then she would end at eight to 10 where we have some people starting eight to 10 for the average person should be a, a pretty good place, especially since we're asking you to walk. We're not telling you that you should be doing anything intense. Another thing I want you to do, Sal, is you, you went through the workouts real quick, but I think what's important that people understand, and we're like, obviously we do this with every program, but uh, the, the the thing that I see with a lot of coaches and trainers is this, the randomness of just throwing exercises yeah. or just the, when, so explain the first three exercises with the mobility. Why did we do yeah. those three mobility moves after those three uh upper body uh, exercises that we did, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. So you have, first off, the mobility day on, on Tuesday not only has to help take care of what happened on Monday, but also somewhat set up what happens the following day. So the 90-90 with the back leg up, well, that's a hip kind of connection and mobility movement. Now, why is that important? Well, the next day you have barbell squats and hip thrusts and walking lunges. That's right. But don't forget that the day before, you did a lot of upper body stuff. So you have shoulder dislocates. This is a shoulder mobility movement. Helps your shoulder move through full ranges of motion and helps your scapula communicate with the upper arm as it moves. Because when you move your shoulder, it's not just the, the upper arm that moves in the shoulder joint, but it's also the shoulder blade that has to move as well. And then lizards with rotation. That is to help you with the mobility in your spine, your thoracic spine. That's good for what you just did Monday and also good to help set you up for what you're about to do Wednesday. So every single mobility session does that. And again, it scales. It continues to scale, and you'll find yourself improving each time. And this is why I think the feedback that I get from all my family is like, God, I feel so yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Which is the opposite of what they would feel like in the past when they just go follow some random routine. Oh, I'm so sore. I'm so I can't sore. Move, yeah. I can't move. I'm thinking about skipping the next day. And I, I really think that's a, that's the brilliance of how we organize this is that not only are we going to be progressing them so they're seeing strength gains go up and starting to feel their body kind of tighten up, but we're also making sure that we're complementing that with the mobility stuff so they actually aren't feeling like they're losing joint mobility at the same time, which sometimes mm -hmm. people feel like when they start off with a weight training routine and they're not addressing that. All right, so let's talk about what you can expect yeah by following this 30-day workout that's all planned out, mapped out for you and, and scaled uh, through that four-week period? Well, number one, you should expect to get stronger. Okay, so what is that? what do I mean by get stronger? Well, either you'll be able to do more reps, you'll be able to do more weight, or you're going to feel much more solid and stable. So maybe when you first did an exercise, it felt a little shaky, you didn't feel as stable, uh, but now by the end of this program, you're doing that exercise and it's smooth and stable and you feel great. Or very clearly, you can do more repetitions. You know, I did, you know, 10 reps with 100 pounds. And by the end of this program, I'm doing 18 reps with 100 pounds. So you can expect to see clear gains in strength as you follow this program. And strength is a, it's such an incredible metric to follow because. If you're getting stronger, it's all, it's one of the metrics where you almost you almost can't do anything wrong in for that for that metric to be positive. Like if you get stronger, what that usually means, and I'm being very general here. Of course, it's more complex than the way I'm going to make it sound. But if you're getting stronger, it means you did most things right. 
if you didn't do most things mm-hmm. right, you wouldn't get stronger. That's just the bottom line. So it's not like the scale moving up or down. Well, maybe I lost water. Maybe I gained water. Maybe I'm dehydrated. Maybe I starved myself and lost muscle, right? The scale can lie to you, right? Um, the mirror can lie to you. Uh, obviously, uh, it's very hard to be objective when you look at yourself in the mirror, especially over the course of three weeks, right? How many times have you thought you looked bad and then looked at a picture of yourself later on and said, actually, I looked a lot better than I thought, right? Strength is objective. The numbers go up. And like I said, it's really hard to do a lot of stuff wrong and get stronger. It usually means you did a lot of things right. I'd argue it's probably the best indicator for your progress and for your health in general, just because of that fact alone, that it's something objective that uh, will will show you whether or not everything is aligned for that to happen. I I agree with that. And one thing I want to add, because I think most people – uh, won't know what this looks like because most of them, most of those benefits you just said are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it's pretty obvious when you get stronger. It's pretty obvious when you feel better. It's pretty obvious if you're starting to lose fat. The metabolism one is that kind of throws a curveball for people sometimes. Oh, yeah. And probably the, the most common feedback I get from people that are going through this is, oh my God, my appetite yeah. is kicking up. I'm so hungry. I want to eat more. Yeah. And so this is a positive sign. Especially in combination with strength. Yes. Yes. If I'm getting stronger and my body is get, I feel like I'm hungry more often, that is a really good sign. That's your body naturally telling you, like, we're trying to build and I, I need the material to do that. Yes. And now I want to be clear here, too. There's a difference between an increase in appetite and cravings. Yeah. And cravings. <laughs> cravings, yes. cravings happen when we're stressed or bored or anxious or there's a trigger food with some kind of emotional connection or something you ate when you were a kid. You know, foods that you can't stop eating once you start eating them. Hunger is genuine, and what you're going to find, if you really pay attention, is you're actually going to be hungrier for foods that contain things like proteins. This is the number one thing I hear from people is like, I'm stronger, my appetite's up. And I'll say, well, what kind of food do you find yourself wanting to eat more? And I'll have clients, especially female clients, would say this to me like, this is weird, but I want to eat more meat, which is strange because I don't normally crave meat. Well, your body is looking for the raw materials to build muscle because- Strength always comes before the building of muscle. You get stronger, muscle is going to follow. Although not always, right? You can get stronger just by getting better movement. Well, if you don't give it what it needs, it won't. That's right. But the appetite going up with more strength, that means your metabolism has sped up. And let me tell you something right now. One of the best things you could possibly have that will safeguard you against obesity and make living life in a world where food is so tasty and around us and so sedentary one of the best things you can have is a fast metabolism. Like if your metabolism burned a lot of calories on its own, it makes being lean way easier than if you had a slow metabolism. So this is a wonderful, wonderful sign that you'll get. And you'll notice this within the first 30 days. You'll also notice less pain and stiffness and better movement. So what you should not notice from a new workout program is the opposite. And a lot of people feel the opposite and they chalk it up to, well, that's because I started working out. Like how many times have people started a program and then, oh my God, my knee's kind of bothering me or my back is kind of stiff or, oh man, that workout was real hard. I need to sit down. It doesn't feel really good. Like that is not a good sign. You should move and feel better as you're doing a good program. That's what you can expect from following a program like this. You should, soreness is okay. A little bit of soreness is okay, but overall you should feel like your posture is better. You're moving better. And those aches and pains that you might have had in the past that were kind of naggy are starting to feel a little bit better. For example, I'll have people tell me, you know, on my ride to work, which takes me an hour, you know, I, I'm here in the Bay Area, so an hour commute is, is quite common. They'd say things to me like, usually at the end of my hour commute, my back is really stiff. I'm noticing my back is not stiff like it used to be. Very good sign. And it's definitely something that you can expect uh, within this 30-day uh, program. Well, that you hear so, that and the energy and stamina, too. Yes. I feel like you, you're, the feedback is, man, I just I feel like I wake up with more energy. I'm more productive at work. I'm in a better mood. All that stuff bleeds into that. Yes, totally. Go ahead, yeah, something to consider, too, like for your overachievers out there that want to throw the kitchen sink to all these things. Um, it, you know, to, to go with, with Adam's uh, sort of saying that he always says about, uh, go ahead and say it real quick. <laughs> to, do, to do the least amount possible to elicit the most amount of With change. the most amount of change, right? So um, in, in terms of picking weight, in terms of 
uh, you know, really trying to, to bring the intensity levels up in each of these workouts, just know you have 30 days to really scale this up and to, I would almost suggest to do a bit less uh, in terms of the intensity than you'd probably think. Well, the way, the way that I coach it to my family right now, especially since we have some really good coaching cues and the videos of you doing the movement and you've got great form, is I, I tell my, my family, like, watch Justin and your goal. Don't think so much, Adam, how much weight should I be doing? Don't be distracted by the handsomeness. Yeah, yeah, don't be distracted by that. Yeah. But try and get to a place where your form is perfect. I care more about that. So find a weight that you can do the reps. You can look like Justin's technique and form. And, th and, that is, and your goal is to get a, as good as, as Justin is at moving the weight. And if you're off at all and your form isn't as good, do not move the weight up. Even if you feel like you can do more weight and those muscles are strong mm -hmm. enough to move more weight, I, I want you to put emphasis on the form and technique, especially right now, over trying to scale the weight up all the time. I think I think we get so hung up on, you know, how much can I do versus how much should I do and getting the form and technique down. So when I coach my family on following this routine, I really put most of the energy in it because here's what I know. I know that, you know, let's say uh, my, my mother-in-law uh, is, is a pretty strong woman and she can do, she could squat 90 pounds. Uh, she hasn't been doing anything. I know even if she did her body weight, squatting for those reps she's going to see change she's especially in the first it's more than what she always does yeah right? it's more than what yeah. she was doing currently so just because i could potentially throw 90 pounds on her back and have her get after it it, it doesn't benefit me that much it would benefit me more by me saying hey listen yeah. take 50 percent of the load mom and actually just get really good at the movement i care more about that yeah. a little side note by the way you mentioned that they're going to you know be seeing justin and i think we're in some of the videos as well adam did we that, do that? I, I maybe you were intros and explanations. Yeah. There you go. Oh, so, yeah, oh, yeah. So keep in mind, we did this four years ago. <laughs> <laughs> a lot less media experience, and and yeah. I have a lot yeah. less. Hey, uh, the value. Gray hair. The value's there. The value but, but, is still there. But the value. Yeah. So if you're looking at it, man, look at Sal's hair. It's really dark. Uh, <laughs> I, was like, I was like 20 pounds heavier, but you know, no big deal. <laughs> it's a, it's a good time. So that's what you're going to see. In. All right. So I know what the the main thing people are waiting to hear is. Okay, what can I expect with fat loss? What can I expect with you know how my body's going to look? All right. What I what I want to explain here is this: Imagine you're you're witnessing the building of a an in, the building of an incredible house. Okay, the first period, the first short period that the builders are going to focus on is going to be on the foundation. Yeah. So you're going to show up to this site where they're building your home, and for the first few weeks, it's not going to look like much. If you're going to now for someone who's experienced, they'll know. They'll be, oh my God, look at the foundation here, and wow, they've got good balance here. The concrete is laid here perfectly. This is going to be a great foundation. But the average person is going to walk up and be like, "Where's the house? Yeah, I don't see the house yet." Right. Once the foundation is built, then you start to get what's called a snowball effect, and then the house starts to really pop up. The walls, and then next thing you know, they're putting in the fixtures, and next thing you know, you have this beautiful home. Our goal with this is to set you up with a faster metabolism better movement, stronger muscles. So in terms of fat loss, you're not going to notice a whole lot in the first month. And that's expected. Not only is it expected, but this is what I encourage. I do not yeah. encourage people to go after crazy fat loss gains in the first yeah. month because you're going to mess up the the foundation building that we're trying to do. But what you we're will- We're building. Yes. But what you- That's, that's the point. The whole point. But what you will notice are the beginnings of a snowball effect. Real effective fat loss does not happen quickly in plateau. This is what most people experience. When most people try to lose body fat and they do everything wrong, and which don't feel bad, this is just how most people do it, they get this initial very fast loss in weight, right? Oh my God, first 30 days, I lost 10 pounds, right? And then they hit this hard plateau and they're stuck in this position where they're like, uh, I guess I got to work out a lot more or eat a lot less to get this going. And it's, it's obviously easy to see why it's so unsustainable. Real fat loss, not muscle loss, real fat loss done in an effective way starts slow, but it speeds up. You get this snowball effect to the point where a few months into it, when everything's going well, you may actually start to wonder how the hell you're getting leaner so quickly. And that's my, that was my favorite comment I would get from clients when they'd come in and go, I I'm keep getting leaner, Sal. I feel like I'm eating more food than I ever have. I don't know what's going on. Almost like it's like a mystery that their body's like freaking out on them. I say, no, this, we're doing everything the right way. And we built a solid foundation, especially with your metabolism. So will you lose fat in the first 30 days? You might, 
You might lose a little bit, but what you'll feel are the beginnings of this snowball effect. But you'll definitely be stronger, you'll definitely be more stable, and you'll definitely feel and move much better. Well, I want to I want to add a little bit to that so they their expectations are right too because th there's a very good chance you actually will uh, drop a, a good amount of body fat, but what you probably won't see and you actually shouldn't see is much movement on the scale. Because if oh, we've done point. if we've done our job and and scaled this correctly with the strength training piece, you should also be building muscle. And if we if we did a really good job and you did a really good job mm -hmm. of following it, you've added a few pounds of muscle at the end of the month and you've lost a few pounds of body fat, which actually ends up looking like the same on the scale. So don't let the scale be what your deciding factor on how successful that you were during that month. In fact, that's actually what I'm looking for for a client in this situation that goes through the first 30 days for me. And I am constantly reminding them that like we, I know you came to me and you hired me to lose 30 pounds, but this first month, I don't want to see that. I want to start to build some good strength. I want to build your metabolism up. And yes, we're going to lose fat, but you may not see it on the scale. Hopefully you do in a month's time start to feel it and see a difference maybe in your waistline and how you're holding yourself and muscle definition mm -hmm. starting to come. That's some stuff that you might you should expect to start to see happening. But so many people were, were trained to look at the scale and use that as like, oh, I'm losing or not. And it's like, yeah, you could easily be losing five to six pounds, but we could have also added five to six pounds of muscle. And so it's a, a net zero on the scale. And a lot of people that are doing phenomenal – uh, because they're following it to a T, don't even realize how phenomenal they're doing because they, they're measuring their success by what's happening on the yeah, scale. Yeah, by the way, if you lose, let's say, five pounds of body fat and gain five pounds of muscle, huge al difference. although the scale isn't going to move, you're going to be smaller. Body fat takes up more space than muscle does. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, body muscle takes up about two-thirds of the space as body fat because it's more dense, like like a brick would be in comparison to, let's say, a, a plank of wood, right? It's it's heavier, it's denser. So what that means is if you gained five pounds of muscle and you lost five pounds of body fat, you weigh the same, but, you've, but you're about a third smaller in terms of size where you lost that body fat. So visually, you'll tell, you can tell. So don't just look at the scale. I'm so glad you said that, Adam, because people will ignore all the other positive signs that they're seeing in that first 30 days because they're so focused on the scale. In fact, I would often tell clients not to weigh themselves the first month because it's such a, it messes with their mind uh, yeah. so much. So look, there you have it. Again, this is totally free. There's no catch or anything like that. Uh, it's something we want to give our audience. It's something we want to get people going. Now, our bet is you're going to love this and you'll probably come back for more. If not, no big deal. But here's again how you get it maps30day.com. You'll get a PDF. On there is the whole workout. So everything laid out for you. And then on each workout, it's hyperlinked to a video demo of that workout with us explaining how to do each exercise, each mobility movement. So it's all set up for you. So you're basically going to get as close as you can get to personal training with us for this 30-day period. Again, one more time, it's maps30day.com. Look, if you like our information and you want more free stuff, you get that, but you want more free stuff, we also offer free guides at mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is remote right now. He's uh, he's in the COVID house, but he looks okay. So you can find Justin no at Mind Pump. No COVID here. Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.